Today is May 17th, 2013, and we are looking at Class 1 Equipment's MA6, serial number 579, ID number 3697. This machine is through the refurbishment process and ready to lock down for shipping. First, we'll just take a, a quick look at it and uh, run wafers. So the machine is set up with a 4-inch vacuum chuck and a 4-inch proximity mask holder that is uh, opening for 4-inch wafers and 5-inch uh, by 5-inch mask. It also includes a 3-inch vacuum chuck. The microscope is a SUS M336 split field scope with Olympus 5X and 10X objectives. It has 10X eyepieces as well as uh, a video camera for monitor viewing. It has UV 400 optics and a dual range sensor uh, for monitoring the 365 and 405 nanometer wavelength. The power supply is a CIC 1200. And it includes a 350 watt lamp house and of course a brand new 350 watt lamp. So we'll run a 4 inch wafer through now in vacuum contact uh, and then I'll unload and run the same wafer in proximity contact. I'll load the mask holder. Load a four inch round wafer. We'll now go up and do wet air compensation and bring the microscope down for viewing. This is not a matched mask and wafer, but we can still demonstrate the alignment process uh, and pull a vacuum chamber. So I'll align my wafer features and then move into contact. Now I'm still satisfied with my alignment, so I'll press align check and it'll pull a vacuum chamber uh, as I've chosen a vacuum contact uh, process. So it's now in vacuum contact, uh, and we've got a vacuum chamber. I'm not sure how well you can see the gauges, but uh, we're at uh, almost negative 0.9 bar uh, in the vacuum chamber. And the alignment still looks good, so I'll press expose. It's set for a five second exposure. Now it'll release the vacuum chamber and then move the Z-axis back down for unloading. Now I'll leave the wafer in place and switch to a, a proximity program. So this will 
rather than doing direct contact between the wafer and the mask, we'll bring two millimeter proximity balls in between them and do wedge air compensation with those balls sandwiched between the wafer and mask. And then it'll move up to the programmed uh, proximity alignment gap. So now it's moved the proximity balls in, it's performing wedge air compensation, then it retracts the balls and moves the wafer up to the pre-programmed alignment gap, which in this case is 40 microns. So I'll perform my alignment at 40 microns and then move to the exposure gap, which in this case is programmed at 20 microns. And once again, a five second exposure. During exposure, the machine is delivering approximately 10.6 milliwatts per square centimeter at the 365 nanometer wavelength, which is monitored on channel one of the power supply. And uh, if you're measuring the 405 nanometer wavelength, it's delivering approximately 20.8 milliwatts per square centimeter. That's on channel two. Now I'll unload the four inch chuck and load the three inch chuck uh, and we'll do a vacuum contact exposure there. It's now performing wedge air compensation on the 3-inch wafer. Now this wafer doesn't have uh, any features on it, but I'm not sure how well it'll show up in the monitor, but uh, what I'll do is just pull a, a vacuum chamber, and you can actually see in the monitor the Newton rings forming, because uh, it's got a good uh, vacuum contact area. So it's now moving into contact and beginning to pull the vacuum chamber. And you can see those light and dark waves across the monitor as the vacuum chamber forms. And once again, a five second exposure. releases the vacuum chamber, brings the wafer back down for unloading. That's it.